All right, guys, welcome to another Eastern Current Fishing video. This is the first of many videos like this. I bought a 50 gallon fish tank. I've filled it up with water. I've added the correct amount of salt, so we're gonna get the same sink rate, uh, the same type of salinity that we're gonna see, you know, out saltwater fishing. And we're gonna do a lot of lure testing. We're gonna test a lot of soft plastics. We're gonna test hard baits. But on today's video, we're gonna take a look at three to four different types of paddle tail soft plastic and see which one performs best underwater. I've upgraded my camera to a GH5, which isn't a brand new camera, but it does shoot up to 180 frames of slow-mo. So we're gonna really be able to break down these baits and see exactly what they're doing underwater, which I think for myself, as well as people that are viewing this video, is gonna really help you understand how to work and retrieve a bait and how to choose the right bait, right soft plastic paddle tail for you in each application. So uh, we're looking at soft plastics today, but like I said, they're paddle tails and each one of them is a different type of plastic. So we're gonna kind of break down and analyze how these perform underwater water. Hope you all enjoy it. So I've rigged up some little kitty rods with these baits that I can stand beside the tank and, and kind of move them around and fish them like I would if I was fishing off of a boat with a normal size rod. First bait we're going to look at is the Z-Man Diesel Minnow. I fish this bait a lot. If you've watched any videos on the channel, you can you can see that it's a bait that I'm, I'm oftentimes pick up and tie on uh, to fish for redfish, speckled trout, and other stuff. So we're going to drop in the tank and kind of see how it performs. Uh, one of the things that I already knew about this bait is that it's going to fall a little bit slower than your other baits. Uh, the fact that it's an Elastec, it's a buoyant material. So if I didn't have a hook on this, it's going to actually float on the surface. What that does is it creates a, a slower fall, but you also get a little bit more action at, because that, that float is going to resist sinking. So it's going to kick more. That paddle tail is going to kick maybe a little bit more, a little bit wider than you get from some denser soft plastics or some soft plastics that aren't necessarily going to float or be quite as buoyant as the Z-Man. What I really like about this bait that I found out in the tank is it takes a lot less speed of the retrieve to get movement from the the tail kicking so some baits you know you really got to move it quickly but this bait you know if i'm if i'm reeling it in at just a pretty normal speed i'm going to get that tail kick and now it's harder for me to get that when i'm vertical like this but when i when i am uh, able to put it on the far side of the tank and reel it i'll get that tail kick pretty good and i really like how wide and realistic the uh the z-man tail actually kicks back and forth that's one thing I noticed about some of the other baits that I didn't get quite as, as big of a kick. But uh, this is a really good jig head for, for swimming. If you're going to slow roll the bait, uh, it, it kicks a lot. It looks very lively. I also really like when it does sit on the bottom, how that tail is going to stand up like that. And what's funny is when I first filled this tank up with fresh water, it would obviously still stand up, but not nearly as much. But it almost all these Z-Man baits almost stand up vertically in the tank um, if, you're, uh, if you're letting them sit on the bottom. The other thing too, when you drag this bait, the Z-Man, since it's a little bit, you know, more more flexible, uh, when you are actually dragging it on the bottom, which I'll do a lot for flounder, or I'll do if I'm in a school of redfish that are a little picky, or I'm trying to get them to bite, you get some really good movement from it just as it's dragging on the bottom. Just kind of, you know, this is rocky bottom. This is a little bit more resistance than what you might get in saltwater, but still little pockets of mud, little shells, little oysters. You're going to get. Uh, you're going to hit with a jig head when you're actually dragging it on the bottom in the salt water as well. And you would get that little, little tail shake like that. So overall, I really like how this bait performs underwater. Uh, I like how it swims. I like how it uh, kind of very little speed and I'm able to get the bait to move. I'm able to get that tail to kick. And I like how it kind of the whole bait pulses when I jig it. It's a good looking bait. It just fouled up there, but a good looking bait overall. One of the things that I didn't really like is when I was swimming it, and I've noticed this even casting off the boat too, but when, I was ca when I'm casting it and swimming it, it does like to lay over on its side a little bit. And I've, I tried rigging it a couple different times to see if it was because of my rigging, but these diesel minnows do kind of like to lay over on their side. Um, not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but it, it doesn't ride completely true and vertical. And I think a lot of that probably has to do just with the hook coming out of the back, that weight above it, it's gonna wanna fall one way or the other. So that hook is obviously pulling it pulling it down to the side, but it's very noticeable in this bait because it, you know as it sits uh, vertically like that, you can see that it's laying over. And now talking about it, I would say that it's because of that hook that's coming out of the top of the bait. So, uh, but overall, I really like the Z-Man. I already knew I liked it, and, and there was really no surprises dropping in the tank of how how it performed. Uh, but one thing that I, I realized that I really like is the dragging of it. Something I don't necessarily do a ton of, but we'll probably do more of is just the you know, reeling it to where I'm dragging it on the bottom. But the sink rate overall, like I said, much slower than the other baits. But we're gonna uh, grab one of these other soft plastics and give it a shot. All right, the next bait is the DOA Cow Shad. It's a little short paddle tail. 
it's I would say much denser than the Z-Man. It's a different material. It's not buoyant like the Z-Man, or at least not as buoyant. I'm actually going to test one real quick just to see um, if it is fully buoyant. I know that the Z-Mans will float on the surface, but well, the the uh, the DOA is going to float right up on the surface as well, but still much denser than the Z-Man. Uh, less uh, movement is what I would overall anticipate for this bait in the water. So I'm going to grab the rod and give her a shot. On the initial fall, it honestly is a lot like a fluke. Like it, there was really no tail or paddle kicking as it was falling from the top of the water column down to the bottom. And as I, as I jig it, I am getting really good tail kicks uh, from this bait if I jig it. And that's one thing I noticed. Uh, when I was when I was filming this in slow mo, was that that tail does kick when I give it a good pop, but whenever I just try to swim it or slow roll it across the tank, it really wasn't enough speed to keep that bait to keep that tail moving. So that was one thing that I kind of realized about this bait is that maybe a great bait to jig off the bottom, but probably not a good bait for slow rolling or casting and retrieving off the bottom. If you're going to be popping this bait, I think it's a really, really good little paddle tail, you know, to pick apart little potholes and pick apart areas and hop it in front of fish. Uh, I would give it a, a real high ranking for that. But as far as a swimming paddle tail or a slow rolling paddle tail, it's not, not my first choice after seeing it in the tank. Now I fish this, the DOA cow shot a lot. I do like this bait, but I will not be picking it up anymore uh, to slow roll or to swim. It's going to be something that I'm definitely using to jig. The nice thing about its small profile and the dense plastic is it falls quickly. So if you're fishing deeper water and want to be near the bottom, this is a good choice to pick up uh, and hop along the bottom. That's the DOA cow shad. We'll look at how it swims here. Now you can see when I hit, when I hit it with some speed and a nice quick pop, I do get that uh, nice tail kick. So like I said, great for jigging, probably not your best choice for, for swimming. All right, the next bait that we're going to look at is the Little Boss. This is by Saltwater Assassin, Bass Assassin, if you will. Uh, and this is a, a really cool swim bait. I used to fish a lot more than I do now, but it's got the ribbing on it, which I know moves a lot of water. And I really do like on these baits when the paddle tail is really thin, the actual tail, thin and wide, because I know that's going to give me more kick. And the thinner the base of the tail before it kind of kicks out to the paddle, the thinner that is, the smaller in diameter that is. Uh, the more you're going to get movement out of that tail. Now it is going to make it a more brittle paddle tail. You know, a little pinfish might rip it off a little bit quicker if it's not an Elastec or a real durable type of plastic, but you are going to get more movement in the swimming motion. So we're going to drop it in the water, kind of see how it falls. We got that kick. Now with that wider tail, what I'm already noticing is the kick is a little bit slower than like that real narrow tail on that DOA cow shad. It's a little bit more like the Z-Man, but I would say the Z-Man's kicking even more than that. And I am curious, let's go ahead and do it right now. Let's drop one of these saltwater assassin baits in the water to see if it floats or sinks. So that one floats as well. Starting to learn most of them do float. And I didn't actually know that. I, didn't, I guess it makes sense because they are plastic. But this is a, this is a good bait to swim is what I'm realizing because it's really that tail moves back and forth really easily with very 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 slow uh, retrieve so this would be a good bait for slow rolling for sure I will say not a ton of great action though when I'm jigging it on the bottom you get some tail kicks but it's not the those fast little pulse tail kicks like I like and that just fouled there which is good to know Not the fast little tail kicks like on the cow shad or like the Z-Man that I like when I'm actually hopping a bait. Not to say it's not great, but I feel like what I want is when I pop it, I want that those little quick uh, tail kicks. I feel like that does trigger a bite when a fish is falling. It. I think this would be a good bait for some larger hops. You know, if you're kind of hop, 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 bring it way up off the bottom and letting it fall back down. But I will say overall, I like the Z-Man better for that as, as far as what it looked like in the tank, the diesel minnow. Nothing crazy about this bait that really draws me to it. I do like, the, the best part about this bait overall though is, is how slowly you can bring it and retrieve it you know, mid water column and get movement from that tail kicking. It can be very, very slow, very little movement. So if you're trying to fish, you know, finesse slow in the winter time for maybe speckled trout that are very lethargic, this could be a good option because you'll get that little tail kick uh, moving that bait very, very slowly. But again, I still would rank the Z-Man higher than this in the paddle tail world. 
All right, so the last soft plastic paddle tail that I grabbed to look at is a small company out of Texas. It's called Grab and Tails Lures. Uh, the guy reached out to me on the podcast years ago, sent me some packages, and there have been baits that I've really liked to fish. So there's no sponsorship. He doesn't even know I'm making this video. I just was grabbing a few different packs of, of paddle tails, and this was one because it was much different than some of the other ones that I, I wanted to grab and test. So the first thing out of the pack is that I really noticed is size-wise and just kind of the shape and taper of this bait. It's a lot like the DOA Cow Shad, but even a little denser of a soft plastic. So before I even drop it in the tank, I assume that it's probably going to need a little bit more speed uh, or, or a faster twitch to get that tail to really activate and swim well. So we're going to drop it in the tank and see what it does. Not much tail kick on the fall, but just like I expected on the DOA cow shad as I jig this, as I hop it on the bottom, I do get uh, some really nice little pulse tail kick from it, uh, just like the cow shad. But if I'm swimming it back and forth in the tank, it's taking more speed to, to be able to really activate that tail uh, and move it. So just like the cow shad, I'd probably be more drawn to this bait. Yeah, really nothing at all as far as the uh, the tail kicking goes. Um, you know, as I swim it back and forth, it's it's really it's more so kind of resisting and wobbling the bait a little bit, but not much tail kick. But now, jigging it on the bottom, really good looking bait. But I will say, you know, if I'm looking for a do it all paddle tail, I'm going to be drawn to that diesel minnow. I mean, I keep going back to that, but it just you know fast or slow, I'm getting movement out of it. Uh, and the way it suspends, it's it's a it's a really good really good bait. Uh, but I do like these smaller, denser plastics if I am trying to hop or fish a paddle tail uh, deeper in the water. So just just to keep in mind, you know, if you're trying to get deep, the smaller, uh, less buoyant a soft plastic is, the quicker it's going to go down to the bottom. So this bait, I do really really like the way it hops, and I've done really good for speckled trout on it, flounder on it, uh, you know, fishing it in this manner, kind of letting it swing and hopping it on the bottom. Uh, it's not one that I've picked up and thrown much as a swimming bait or a slow rolling bait. Dragging it on the bottom, it kind of wants to lay over on its side and not do much. Yeah, not much movement at all as I drag it on its side. Uh, but if I am, like I said, these denser, smaller paddle tails that are a little bit harder to get that tail to activate, they're great baits for jigging deep. That's what I'm drawn to. Uh, and I kind of already understood this about the paddle tails beforehand, but putting them in this tank and being able to look at them and really look at the bait in slow motion is a great way to kind of analyze uh, the bait. And I will say, out of all these paddle tails, it, it, at nothing, my mind has not been changed. I'm not sponsored by Z-Man. I don't get Z-Mans for free. Uh, but that diesel minnow, I would say, would be my first choice in a paddle tail because you really can do it all. Um, and maybe not even just a diesel minnow, but some type of a Laztec style bait that's a little, like I, I want a bait for obviously something that's durable that's gonna hold up is great, but what I really want as far as action is a very flexible bait that is more buoyant than, than not, that's gonna have a lot of action because you can do it all with that bait. It's not kind of putting you in the corner like a denser, smaller paddle tail where you you know you really need those quick twitches to activate the tail. So uh, an Elastec style bait, a buoyant bait that's going to give you that action with very little effort, uh, I would say as far as the paddle tail world goes, is what you're looking for. Well guys, if there are any other types of soft plastics, any hard baits, really any baits at all that I could drop in the tank and break down and analyze for y'all and kind of share with you how I would fish them, when I would fish them, or if I would fish them at all, please let me know in the comments. I'm going to be doing a lot of videos now in this tank getting the lighting even more dialed and the camera more dialed so I can bring you all the best quality image so you can really understand what your baits are doing in the water when you're out there fishing. Hopefully this will give you a better idea of what to pick up in each application and in return help you all catch more fish when you're out in the water. But like I said in the comments below, just give me some ideas of some of the baits that y'all would like to see and I'll be sure to, uh, to do some videos on those. But thanks for checking out this first video. Also, let me know if there's anything I should have changed or done a little differently in the video. Uh, but as always, thanks for checking out this Eastern Current video, and we'll see you in the next one.